Check it out, everybody. It's your boy Rev, and I did a thing. Let's get into it. So if you've been watching my videos, if you saw my review on the Ravens, then you know that I really likened my dual Raven setup to having two touchscreen monitors because I don't use the Slate Raven software and I'm using Studio One, which already takes into consideration touchscreen. Touch um, I've tried more and more to do more functions directly from within the mix window on the screen without using my mouse. I've really been trying to just engage in using the touch screen. I've had times where I've actually taken my mouse, taken the battery out or put it to the side and said, I'm not gonna touch my mouse. And I always end up going back for my mouse. After a while, it gets frustrating. And it's not that there are no situations where you know, touchscreen is advantageous on Studio One or that the Ravens come into play and, and that they will benefit outside of looking good. Um, because I would hate to have to, you know, zoom in and out using, you know, the sliders on my with my mouse when I can just go on the screen and, you know, make things bigger, make them smaller, you know, scroll through the, you know, the page or through the edit window. So there definitely are advantages. Um, at the same time, they haven't served me at the price point for which, you know, they, they cost. It just hasn't served me that well. Um. So I did a thing a couple days ago. I'm sitting at the, uh, I'm sitting at my desk and my keyboard is really acting up. I mean, giving me a hard time. Because this wasn't working and it had been happening for a few days, I got frustrated. I went into the storage closet. I went into my big green bin of cables and computer peripherals and things of that nature. And inside was a keyboard, a wired keyboard and a mouse and one other piece of equipment, All right? I gotta show this to you. Hopefully you can see it. In fact, maybe I'll take you on this little journey with me that you can get a good look. Looking right here, let me get my camera out. I want you to see this. All right, check this out. Here goes the keyboard. Come on, roll with me, roll with me. Here goes my mouse. I don't even know why I was using that wireless mouse when I have this and I've had it for a long time. I would just went in, got it, feels so much better. You guys see my recording going on in the background. But the big thing that I got, the big thing that I went in and I hooked up at my desk that really just changed everything. My old Presonus keyboard. Take a look at that. This little baby right here. Hit you with a little B-roll so you can really see what I'm talking about. This is what I'm missing. I was using it in Pro Tools. There was always a trouble with like one or two buttons that would always give me a result that I didn't want, even though I was using the proper installation. You know, um, it, it was just giving me an, an issue. So when we moved to, to here, when we moved to the new house, uh, I packed it up. I never put it back out because I was having a hard time with it. And then we know maybe a year after being here, or a year and a half, went and got Studio One. Didn't even think about, well, hey, I have another piece of Personas equipment that you know works well with this software. Didn't think about that at all. Um, wasn't a concern. In any case, I find it in the green bin and I hooked it up. And of course, it's already set to work, work perfectly with Studio One, of course because it's a Presonus unit. I was a little concerned that the driver was old and maybe it wasn't gonna work as well because they already have a Mark II version of this uh, fader port and 
I don't know if it's Mark II or Mark III. I'm assuming Mark II. Um, and maybe this is outdated. It's just not going to function as well. Well, I didn't have to. I didn't have to worry too long. But as soon as I hooked it up, installed the driver, opened up a session in Studio One, and it works perfectly. It works so perfectly. Hear me, guys. It works so perfectly that I am starting to realize more benefit in my Ravens, if that makes any sense to you. Let me explain. I bought the Ravens to be a control surface. At the time, I was thinking about going to Studio One. I was looking at different controllers. This was very attractive because I was getting the desk with it. It looked good. It, it's an attention grabber in every situation in which I saw this setup, my attention was grabbed, so I was attracted to it. Um, and of course, you know, you watch enough Raven videos and you become a believer. That's just the reality. Fortunately, got it, didn't work that way for me. And in, in my experience, I kept looking for something to touch. I kept wanting to push the fader and, you know, feel that 100 millimeters uh, of space. I, I thought in the least bit, you know, even if I had to be on the screen, I wanted my 100 millimeters of length because that's what I'm familiar with. I can kind of slide that up and down, knowing the sensitivity and being able to gauge it with my eyes closed. Didn't get everything that I wanted out the Raven. The fader port though, it really does, it kind of takes the mouse out of the equation. It's things that I thought about doing the mouse for, right? Um, it, it takes it out of the equation and it also takes the keyboard out of the equation as it pertains to the transport. So I'm no longer worried about stop, start, next marker, uh, previous marker, um, you know, record. I, I'm not worried about that anymore. All of that is on the transport on the fader port. So I'm all the things that I wanted to be easy for me on my Ravens that were not now exist here. The mute and, and solo buttons, you know, how frustrating it is trying to hit mute on the on this screen uh, in Studio One and missing it. It's extremely frustrating. But you know what I'm not going to miss if I click with my finger the entire track. Now, maybe for some people, this sounds like a bunch, but for me, I touch the track and I hit mute. You know, I'm, I'm on my screens here. You know, this is, it's, it's actually rather simple. Hey, look, you know, you hit one side quickly, boom, mute on the fader port. I got two hands. It's really quick. And you know, once I've selected the channel I want or I'm remotely close from then on out, the other advantage is, you know, you have the bank button, you can skip, you know, eight at a time, or you're also going one at a time through the channels left and right. And because it's a clickable button, you know, uh, and I don't know if any of you've ever had the first fader port. I've thought a couple times about buying, you know, a fader port too, but I hate the way it looks. And I appreciate this more traditional looking fader port unit, which seems to do most of the same things. If you've had one, you know, these buttons are like, they're just the perfect stiffness. The, I mean, literally they, the stiffness on these buttons is just, it's perfect. It's a full click in, click out. Um, I like it. I like it. It reminds me of, a more nostalgic piece of analog equipment. I like it, All right? The, of course, I have the motorized fader, which I appreciate. It's, uh, it was in storage for a little while and it wasn't working perfectly when I first hooked it up and I was a little wor worried. And I went through here and I just, you know, ran it up and down the fader a few times. And, you know, before you knew it, it was like, it was working like butter, like butter, I tell you. So uh, really good situation going on here with the fader port. And so I'm seeing how it's easier 
still, even though I've upgraded my mouse now, going back to my stationary mouse with the ball, um, it's still easier for me just to quickly hit the track that I want to manipulate and go in and use the fader port. And I've used the user button uh, on the fader port right now is set so that when I click it, it goes to add insert, you know, put it later to add, go to a specific vocal chain or instrument chain, whatever the case is, but quickly add insert. And then I can probably with my finger click, you know, which one of those I want to use, what effect I'm looking to use. So be, it could be the positioning because my mouse is here and then the fader port is right next to it. But with the fader port, I'm already using the mouse less. And in the, the situations where I do need to use the mouse, it actually turns out that it's more convenient for me to touch the screen. So adding my fader port into the mix here with these Raven MTIs has literally made them, made these touch screens more important to me, more valuable to me. And I, I'm saying this, I made this change just a few days ago. So I haven't done heavy production in it. Um, I haven't done heavy recording in it just yet. But what I have done is open it up and just found, you know, even in mixing another tr uh, older track, just how much everything just flowed. And it was very natural for me to go and touch the screen that's in front of me, you know, after just a couple moments, you know, a couple minutes rather using the fader port. So I would say, if you have a Raven and you're hanging on to it, you use Studio One and you still have that desire for some actual touch, you wanna add some motorized faders, I can give you one with the PreSonus fader port. It works awesome with Studio One. I've had absolutely no issues. Everything works exactly as you expect it to, which is what I felt was missing from my, my Raven software for Studio One. You know, the key commands just set up just never really worked to make things go the way that I had wanted them to go. But right here, I have this little controller. Am I tempted right now to say, goodness gracious, it would be nice just to go ahead and get, you know, uh, you know, the Fader Port 8 or, you know, or one of these other control services from PreSonus now that I know how well they integrate with Studio One as they should. Um, yeah, it's definitely tempting. But right for the moment, I'm super satisfied. Like, I'm super duper satisfied. So, if you got questions you want to ask, go ahead and hit your boy Rev. Before we end the video, I want to give a shout out to my boys out there at Sweetwater. They hooked your boy up with some neat threads. I got my little Sweetwater shirt on today. Appreciate you guys for that. Um, hey, any of you who are watching this right now and you have a business or a t-shirt design and you're looking for people to wear your tee, I will proudly model a 3XL sized version of your t-shirt, right? Um, you got one that you want me to wear on the shirt, on the sh uh, on my channel rather. If you got one you want me to wear on the channel, definitely hit me up in the email rev at callthatreverend.com. Again, that's rev at callthatreverend.com, and I'll hit you with an address for you to ship the shirt to, and I will definitely shoot one of my videos for it in your shirt, right, for people to see. Um, as long as there's no like profanity or anything crazy like that, right? Um, and, and don't put anything political either. Appreciate it. Uh, all right, that's it. If you didn't already like the video, subscribe to the channel. I keep telling you guys really great things going on. So like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're a producer and you want some info on music production, how to make some money with your music, check out the free phone call that I host every couple weeks crescendosessions.com go there sign up for the next call all right you have to sign up for each call individually so if you sign up for one if you want to be on the next call you need to register again um crescendosessions.com right there i'm live you got questions i've got answers other colleagues have answers it's a really good thing that we got going on hit me up
as always, get bigger, get better. Crescendo on that reverend.